Hi kids, my name is Kenny Choi. I'm a news anchor and reporter for KPIX 5 CBS in San Francisco. I'm a journalist. I've been doing this for about 20 years. And I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about what I do. So I started off as a sports anchor and a reporter right after college. I started off as an intern at a TV station in Los Angeles when I was in college at UCLA. And I got to go to all these uh, Laker games, Dodger baseball games, all these different teams that I had um, rooted for. And so it was so cool to be able to report and to do these stories on, on these athletes that I admired growing up. Um, that's what really got me into journalism at the beginning. And so it was awesome. I got to interview Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, the, the coaching staff, um, Dodger players, uh, all these professional athletes. And so it was so fun to do that. And then I transitioned into news um, a, a few years later. And so, but I'm still a journalist, whether you're a sports uh, journalist or a news journalist, um, it's about storytelling and telling people about what's happening in your community. And it's so important because there are good stories, there are bad stories, there are times when as a journalist you have to reveal some of the problems that are that um, exist in a community and so um, there are challenging stories there are stories that are fun to do there are uplifting stories but it's just a, a, a great way to um, tell people what is happening and uh, one example I a couple years ago I met your teacher Jackie um, because we were doing a story about cool schools in the Bay Area, schools that were doing some really interesting and neat things, and and your school was doing something awesome. You guys had set up this garden uh, for kids to grow food and to learn about nutritious foods and how to compost and do all those kinds of things. And so I went out there and I, I called your teacher, I called the principal, and we did this story about your school and then we aired it on Cape Cat X5. So the entire Bay Area got to see this story about your school. So um, that was just one story that I've done. But um, other people in our community who are watching TV and were watching the newscast were able to find out about the cool things that you guys were doing. Um, one of the another awesome element of, of being a journalist is that you can meet people, you can meet the mayor, you could talk to the governor, you could talk to all these people that um, that you have access to because you want to tell their stories and what's happening. And so that's why I got into the the news business, um, broadcast journalism business. And uh, I hope to to see you guys soon. Hope to visit you guys soon because I will. I'd be happy to do that. So again, my name is Kenny Choi. I'm a, a news anchor and reporter for KPIX 5 CBS. That's a little bit about uh, how I got into the, the business and, and my job as a journalist. Have a great day, guys. My name is Jeanette De La Rosa and I am an accountant. I have been working in accounting for about 20 years now. I first started working in a tax office while also going to college. Today, I work for an insurance company in the finance department. I am one of six people that work in the accounting team. Our team keeps track of the company's finances with the use of computer programs. We pay employees every two weeks and we create a report every month of all the financial activity. This report helps us to understand where the money comes from and where it's going. These reports help us help the company make decisions for the future and to set goals, such as whether we need to hire new people or maybe buy new monitors. The tools that I use at work are, of course, the computer and good internet access. I also use this Tenki calculator and I always have handy a notepad and pen. The skills that you need to be a good accountant is to be detail oriented. You need to be able to catch mistakes and um, be able to see the small changes in things. 
You also need to be a good critical thinker. That just means that you're able to make your own decisions based on the information that you have. We also need to be able to manage our time wisely. We have lots of reports or lots of stuff that we have to do throughout the month, and but we need to meet it by a certain time, by a certain deadline. So we need to turn in our work and make sure that it's all turned in on time. Uh, accounting has changed quite a bit from when I started working and I'm sure it's going to change in the future. One of the main things is the computer programs. They're constantly changing and we need to keep on learning about them. I always take new classes or um, on the changes about what's going on and there's always changes in the law too. The, the, there's changes in laws that affect how we pay employees. So that is something that I always have to take classes on. If uh, business or accounting sounds like something you would like to do in the future, my advice is that you can start doing this now. If you get an allowance or receive uh, a birthday present and you get some cash as a gift, you can write down on a piece of paper how much money you received. And you can decide what to do with this money, whether you spend it, whether you save it, or whether you decide to share it maybe with another, with an, uh, an organization like a church or a food bank. So at the end of the month, every time you use the money, you're going to write it down on the piece of paper. At the end of the month, you're going to see how much money you have left and you're going to see what you did with it. This information will help you make your decision what you're going to do with this money next month. And that's basic accounting and everybody that uses it at home and in businesses. So accounting jobs can be found in different businesses and organizations, such as universities, hospitals, cities, big and small businesses, Amazon, supermarkets. The list is endless. So overall, my advice to you is to just keep on learning and discovering how the world works around you. Hello, I'm Firefighter Jimmy. I got to meet some of you before in Mrs. Estrada's class, and I'm so lucky because today I get to say hi to everyone at Spruce Elementary School. Firefighters are helpers. We get to help people in your neighborhoods. Did you know that you could be anything that you want to be? Have you ever thought about being a firefighter? I'd like you to meet some of my friends that are firefighters that I get to work with. Hi kids, my name is Firefighter Joel. And I'm Firefighter Lindsay. And we're here to show you our fire engine and some of the tools we have inside. Hey kids, so this is the fire engine. This fire engine holds a lot of water. And this panel here controls where that water goes. Let me show you how it's done. There's water! So I want to show you our firefighter clothes, or what we firefighters call it, our, our turnouts. These are our firefighter pants. We have suspenders to keep our pants up so they don't fall. This is my firefighter hood. This helps with heat, just like our firefighter clothing does. This is our jacket. I have my firefighter helmet. And this is what we wear to protect us from heat. Next, I'm going to show you, this is our air pack, and this is what we wear when we have to go into a fire. It gets really smoky, and this is going to give us all the clean air we need so we can be in there for a while and do work and put out the fire. 
So I'm going to show you how we turn it on. It's going to make a little bit of noise, and that's totally normal. And we wear it just like a backpack. We tighten it with these straps, and we buckle it just like we would a seatbelt. Next, this is our mask, and this is what we wear inside a fire. It protects our face and allows us to see when it's smoky conditions. I'm going to put my firefighter hood on. This helps protect my head and my hair and my neck. Put my helmet on. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my air to this opening right here. So you look super different wearing all this protective clothing, but I you do. could still see inside that mask. It's still the same friendly firefighter Lindsay on the inside. So we have a lot of exercise equipment at our firehouse. Some of you might remember there was a fire on Syme Hill. Firefighter Joel and I went to that fire and it was on a super steep hill, the one with the letters on top. Firefighters need to be strong enough and healthy enough and fast enough to put out fires like that, which is why we exercise every day while we're at work. How far are you gonna run today, Joel? About four miles. Are you? No. <laughs> How are you? One and a half miles. <laughs> One and a half. What are you going to do today, Lindsay? I'm going to do sumo deadlifts. All right. That works out your leg and your back. There's all kinds of other cool things at the firehouse I'd love to get the chance to show you, like our four different fire engines and all the tools that we have, but we'll have to save that for another time. I had a lot of fun today, and I hope we get to have more fun again soon. And maybe when you grow up, we can work together. You take care. Bye-bye. Sophia Ahmed. I'm so excited to be joining you all remotely um, for Spruce Elementary's career fair. I was invited by my really good friend, Miss Broman. I am an actor, and if I asked you guys in person what you thought an actor did, you might say film, TV, commercials maybe, you've probably seen actors all those places maybe in plays on stage and I've done a little bit of all of those things. Um, actors also do a bunch of other things that maybe you didn't realize they do. Um, if you hear on the radio commercials, actors do those, that's voiceover. If you have ever listened to a book on tape, those are usually actors, a lot of pictures. Some pictures are models, but a lot of pictures are actors. I have something that I did here a really long time ago now that was a board game, and I was in pictures on the board game. Um, and just like I bet everything has changed a lot for you guys this past year, uh, having to go to school from your homes, Acting has stopped in person. It's not safe to gather in theaters or on film sets. 
and so I've been doing some things from home. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour of my setup of a reading I did tonight. I because it's kind of crazy working with being at home. Normally I do readings in a theater with an audience and other actors, but tonight I did one at home on Zooms and the director requested that we have a blank backdrop. So I, since all of my child's drawings are up on the wall, I put up this big sheet backdrop that was behind me. Um, these are bright lights um, so that I could be lit while I was sitting. This is my computer where I have the script on <laughs> one side um, that I'm trying to scroll through and um, scroll and read. And then I was acting with other actors. That Zoom has now ended, um, <laughs> which is how I'm able to record. But I was doing that and seeing the other actors on Zoom. I've got a mic set up here. Very different from um, how I ordinarily do readings or do plays, but this is like how you guys are doing school on Zoom. This is how some acting is happening on Zoom right now. So I'm trying to remember the first play that I was in, I think was when I was in first or second grade. It was a holiday play and then I did plays throughout school. I danced a lot also and I fell in love with it and I decided to go to college to study theater and that was really helpful because if you're doing eight shows a week, you have to learn how to use your voice in a way that doesn't hurt your voice. You have to learn to use your body in a way that doesn't hurt your body. Um, and you read lots and lots of plays. And, and I think that's one of my very favorite things about acting, particularly in plays, is reading a lot of stories and being able to tell stories and learn about different people and share those experiences with the audiences when I get to meet with people. Um, be on stage in person with people or doing things on film and TV and, and knowing that they're reaching people even if I don't get to see them across the stage. Um, so I want to thank you all so much and say go Spruce Cougars and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your school year. Bye! school with your teacher Mrs. Estrada back in the day. Uh, she's actually one of my best friends and uh, yeah so a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm an x-ray tech at Stanford where I take pictures of patients that are hurt or sick. So if you break a bone or if you have a weird body ache somewhere and you got to go to the hospital you come see me and I come take a picture of your boo-boo and work with the doctors to help you get feeling better. Um, I started doing this a few years ago uh, because, well, I didn't know what to do. Um, I got lucky and I started volunteering at a hospital in San Mateo in their x-ray department and I found out that I really liked it. Um, to be a tech, you basically, once you graduate high school, you go into a program that's offered at a college or an actual hospital like Kaiser and they train you for a couple years and you go to school, quote unquote, um, and you study and you take your tests. And at the same time, you're also actually working at a hospital learning about what it is we do. And then after two years, once you graduate, you have to sit and take a big test for your official license. Once you pass that, you're an official x-ray tech. Um, the programs do a pretty good job of preparing you to pass that test. And then once you're licensed and you're an official x-ray tech um, you pretty much get a job wherever it's not too difficult to do so 
Um, the nice thing is about the training is you usually meet some pretty cool people along the way that help you get that first job out of school. Um, to be a good x-ray tech, you gotta really know the human body. You gotta have good communication skills and you gotta be a hard worker. Um, you're gonna see people in, you know, that are hurt, they're in bad shape, so it can be difficult at times. But it's also really cool to see people get better and be on their way and have a normal life after their injury. It can get a little messy in this line of work, so you gotta be, be able to ready, or you gotta be ready to see some people in bad shape. And there is some blood involved, unfortunately. But what we do is very important because we enable the rest of the medical staff see things that would be otherwise impossible otherwise we're all over the hospital we're up in surgeries we're up in the regular general areas we're in the emergency department so you see x-ray techs all the time with their machines walking all over the hospital taking pictures of people it's a pretty cool job um you know we get paid pretty good but i think the best part about being an x-ray tech is that you get to wear pajamas to work well they're not actually pajamas, they're called scrubs, but they pretty much feel like pajamas. So it's pretty cool if you ask me. And you get to wear cool hats like your baseball cap and some pretty sweet goggles. Um, but yeah, if you guys wanna learn more about what we do, um, I would definitely recommend once, you know, once you're able to, to volunteer at a hospital or somewhere in, that's close to home so that you can see firsthand what it's like. Um, you know, you never know. You might like taking pictures and I mean, you might like seeing bones and, you know, the inside of people. So, um, yeah, give it a shot. Hi, my name is Alvin. Uh, I, uh, I want to thank you for having me for career day. Uh, happy to share my experience and hopefully you guys will learn a little bit of what uh, I do. What my current title is, is development director at EA, uh, working for Maxis on the video game Sims 4. Uh, what development director means is I'm the project manager or one of the project managers we have here that helps keep the schedule uh, and the game development packs on track. So I partner with a lot of different groups uh, to make sure that we have the right assignments, the right details, uh, and that all the work is coming together as planned. The Sims 4, we have a bunch of packs that we release for the game. Uh, as a development director, I directly don't do the work. I help schedule the other folks, but their jobs are far more entertaining than mine. Uh, and I wanna talk about that and see, let you know uh, the different roles I get to work with. Uh, first and foremost, my partner is the producer. They help understand what the vision of the game is. So for example, we just, uh, as recently as uh, last year, gosh, that was a long time. last year we, uh, we did a pack that was themed around Star Wars. So, um, but the producer helped shape, what are we going to try put into this game for this pack release? Um, so you can think of the producer is, they decide what we're making. My role as the development director is, how are we gonna make it? Meaning what staff do we need? What are their assignments for that pack? And how do we get there? Uh, on schedule. Uh, I also partner with game designers. Game designers are just that. They, they design what the functions of the game will be, how do you interact, what with if there's a story to what we're doing, and we did have a story for, uh, for the Star Wars pack, uh, what will the player experience be? What will they interact with? How will they progress and have fun? No, that's kind of what their role is. They, they help shape what is fun about what you're gonna play. Um, there's also roles in engineering. Uh, so the engineers write the code. They're the ones that do all the nitty gritty under the hood. You need strong math skills and good, what they call logic skills of how things work. Uh, so for those of you who like to tinker uh, and understand workflow and how things connect together, engineers are the ones that are really in charge of that experience. Uh, we also actually also have user experience and user interface. Those uh, skilled folks shape how you interact with the game. So that's exactly it, user experience. What are you gonna click on? Does everything that you see on the screen make sense? How does it connect? Uh, and then you, can you read what's going on by looking at the, the art? 
that leads into the artists that we work with. Uh, it all starts with concept art. They do uh, the first sketches, whether on pencil or on the computer now these days. They draw, here are the things we can make uh, to give you the theme. It goes down to the modelers, uh, who I directly work with. I'm, I also watch over the, the, the modeling group directly. They model everything that you'll see in game, such as this background behind me, um, the trees, the waterfall, the mountains. Uh, we also have character artists that design the characters that you see in the game. Uh, animation to make them move and give them that locomotion uh, and move across the screen, go where you want them to. Uh, in our particular case, we had them. We had to do some new animations for fighting with lightsabers that hadn't been done before in the game. So they did that as well. Uh, we do have environment artists that specifically work on what the backgrounds look like, not the stuff you touch every day, but more more accurately, uh, what what you see in the world. Um, and then there's also other groups such as sound that shape the music, they shape the sound effects, the talking. If you're familiar with The Sims, they talk in Simlish. So it's a little bit of gibberish and it's made up language. Um, there are people dedicated to each of these roles to help you uh, build the game as a whole. So I get to work with all those people in my experience as the development director. Uh, again, I'm not the expert in any one thing, though they are the expert, but I'm their partner in making sure that they understand their workflow to get us to completing the game. Uh, in my role, you know, we talk a little about what experience you need, um, being able to look at things uh, at a large scale, uh, where the artists, the people that work in the disciplines, they look at their, what am I gonna uh, get done today? What am I gonna get done tomorrow and maybe later this week? My responsibility means I need to look at the longer view of what are, what are people working on in the next few weeks? Are we on track to get them there? Are we going to hit our deadlines? Um, they, you know, they're the able to do the what we call the particulars of a day to day. I look to the longer view of how is the project itself progressing, and how are we going to hit those milestones as we track them uh, to complete the game. Um, I really enjoy my job. You know, I, like I said, I get to work with all those different disciplines. Uh, they're all wonderful people that are experts in what they do. So I get to learn a little bit about each of their jobs without directly uh, being able to do it myself. Uh, but it gives me exposure. It gives me a chance to connect people. Uh, it's, I think, uh, a similar way um, you could explain what I do is I help direct traffic. So if you're trying to, if you know, if I have one artist that's not sure where they're supposed to find information, I'm the one that helps find it for them and tell them, go talk to this other person. They can help you resolve the issues that you're facing. Um, and then how difficult would it be to find my job, um, a, a job like mine? It's not difficult. There's always, we're always looking for new talent. Um, I think the field itself, um, again, when I was growing up, there was no degree in game development, but now there is. So a lot of people uh, do, do follow that and want to get a career in games. Uh, and I've loved it, but it's very challenging to, to start in the business. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't, you know, you have to just put the work in. Uh, and then just for example, you know, like being, having successful career, or having successful experience doesn't mean you need to work at the big studios like Blizzard or EA or Nintendo. Um, there are plenty of what we call indie studios that are very small groups, uh, that make just as successful games, if not just more amazing games. Uh, my friends and I are right now are playing one called Valheim, where you get to be Vikings uh, and live a Viking life, so to speak. But <clears throat> that game uh, is was only made with five people. My game, uh, my, my team right now is probably over a hundred uh, in The Sims Four. So you know, and both have been successful. And for five people to do such a fantastic game that we've enjoyed, you know, it doesn't. You don't need to have those big names behind you if if you have the ability and the ambition and the right team, you know, you can find success without having to work for those big companies. Um, my advice for anyone that's interested in um, considering a, a career in video games is to play everything, play everything you can get your hands on. Uh, there's a lot of free games out there. Uh, but more importantly, you know, even if you don't like it, you I really think that students should understand to be able to say why you don't like it. Uh, that shows a lot of thought. You know, it's easy to say you don't like something, but you really need to think of why does this work or why why am I not enjoying this? Because that makes you a stronger critical eye, uh, being able to share that experience and being able to tell others, here's what would make it better because here's what makes it difficult. Um, being able to find that balance of 
you know, saying what you do like, that's always easy, but being able to describe why something feels wrong or why something doesn't quite work uh, is even more valuable because it'll help you be uh, more insightful and understand um, what, how to make things better if you can understand why the experience is not good. Um, so always trying to make it better is the, is the goal. Um, I hope you found some of this interesting. Uh, again, thank you for having me uh, and good luck, you guys. Hello, hi, Mrs. Estrada's class. My name is Kimberly and Mrs. Estrada asked me to tell you a little bit about my job and why I decided to do what I do. So I am a nurse. If you can see, I'm actually getting ready to go to work right now. Um, and I decided I wanted to be a nurse when I was maybe 13 or 14 years old. Um, my aunt was a nurse and she told me all about her job and I thought it was so neat that she got to take care of patients and make them feel better when they were sick. Um, many times we ended up at her hospital. Um, maybe I fell or um, my brother one time broke his hand and we had to go to the emergency room where she was or my grandpa got sick one time and we had to go there and I was able to see what she did and I just thought it was really neat seeing her take care of patients and she always made us feel better and I loved that. So yes, this was when I was about 13 years old. I decided I wanted to be a nurse. Um, long before I knew exactly what being a nurse entailed. Um, but I always stuck to that um, and it worked out. I loved science classes as I got older, um, loved science, loved anything that had to do with the body, anything medical, um, anatomy, learning where, what bone connects to this bone, connects to this bone, that was always fun to me. Um, so when I was 18 years old, I went to college and I had to take a lot of sciences to be a nurse, but I loved it. And then I got into the nursing program a few years later. Um, the nursing program is where you learn everything that you need to know about nursing. And I um, learned at that point, after going through all different types of nursing, there's pediatric nursing, there's adult nursing, there's uh, surgical nursing, there's emergency department, there's critical care, so lots of different options. Um, I really liked the emergency department and I like the emergency department because it's exciting. There's, you know, you never know what kind of patient's going to come in and what might be wrong with them or what they might need. Um, and I found that exciting. So um, I'm an emergency room nurse and my responsibilities are pretty broad, meaning um, we have to know a lot because like I said, anything can come through the emergency department doors. Someone who maybe just scratched their knee and they just need um, to have their knee looked at, maybe cleaned up and put a Band-Aid on it or something bigger. Other things could come in the door. Um, things like if someone gets, maybe falls off their bike and they have like a broken wrist like my brother did when we were younger. Um, so lots of different things come to the emergency department. So we have to really just be prepared, be on our toes, but I love that. Um, things that you need to be a nurse, I think compassion, um, patience. Uh, it's, it is um, a, sometimes a stressful job, but if you are patient with yourself and patient with your patients and you have a lot of compassion and you understand that they're going through something hard, it makes the job much easier and it makes it so rewarding to be able to take care of these patients. Um, what do I love about my job? You know, I, I love the variety. I love that, you know, I've been an ER nurse for about six or seven years 
and I know that I can go on to do other types of nursing. Um, right now, I still love emergency room nursing, but if in a few years I decide I don't want to do emergency nursing anymore, maybe I want to do pediatric nursing and I can go take care of babies and kids. Um, that's fun to me to know that there's other options out there. Um, I like being able to make people feel better. Um, sometimes, most of the time, when someone comes to the emergency department, it's because something's wrong. And I like being able to make them feel better, make their day better, comfort them in whatever way I can. Um, nursing is ever-changing. Um, if my aunt would tell me that nursing today is so different than it used to be, um, and I know that it's going to keep changing. Um, obviously, there's a lot of inventions happening and a lot of, you know, things changing um, with the way that we do things. We learn a lot. You know, it's it's something that is, like I said, ever changing. So my job in 10 years will probably be drastically different. And I can't even imagine it because there's just so many advancements in, in science happening all the time. Um, when I graduated and I decided I wanted to be an ER nurse, it was pretty hard to be an ER nurse right off the bat. Um, you have to go get different types of experience. So I did have to start out in a different area of nursing, but I still loved it. It was called the medical surgical floor and it's where adult patients, so not pediatrics, not little kiddos like you guys, but adults go um, and if they have if they're sick in any way or if they have had surgery, they would go to that floor. Um, and that's where I started out as a nurse. Um, and then it took me about two years to become an emergency room nurse and I've been in the emergency ever since. Um, and I love it. We get to take care of a lot of people and see and do really cool things. So I'm interested to hear, I'm gonna talk to Mrs. Estrada after you guys see all these videos. I'm interested to hear what you guys wanna be when you grow up.